Okay, so I put the cabinet up here this morning, shot a video, and then I looked at the video and I realized all I did was talk about how uh, all the negative comments, and I, I don't want to do that. I, don't, I, I really don't want to dwell on the negative comments. I, I never respond to negative comments for that reason because um, it's just, you know, better to avoid that. So I'm shooting a new video, uh, answering a couple of questions. Since I put the cabinet up here this morning, it, it rained, so we're putting the cabinet to the test right away. And I got a neighbor using the chainsaw across the way over there. But anyway, uh, a couple of questions about this project. Um, one was, if you're going to build an outdoor cabinet that was going to be clear finished, what kind of wood would you use? And I would say Sapili, but that being said, I don't know if I would build a whole cabinet and clear finish it uh, for exterior use. I think it's okay to, to maybe, like I've got the, the seats to the chairs over there and this top, but my plan here is really to lightly sand these and uh, refinish them probably once a year. A whole piece of furniture, that would be a lot of work and it really would depend on the climate where you live. Uh, I didn't show this, I did use a, a little brass uh, clip. These are the kind of clips that you see in the hardware store all the time. And I painted over that also. And um, you can see that I do now have the paint thinner in the cabinet and for the most part that's how I'm going to use this cabinet uh, but my wife came out and staged the the cabinet for the the shoe and I thought it looked good with the wine glasses and and all uh, and it, when I have clients out to the barn or if we have a uh, uh, friends over I'll just take this bucket out and put a bottle of wine in and, and set it up so it looks a little bit nicer as far as how did I attach the top to the cabinet I used my biscuit joiner to cut slots in the cabinet and then I made clips with uh, using the bandsaw and the table saw that fit into those slots and connect the top but also allow the top to expand and contract. I used a weather seal on the top of the cabinet and also for the doors. I'm really just trying to keep any moisture out of the inside of the cabinet. The weather seal will also keep bugs out of the cabinet like spiders and things like that. Let's see, um, for the bottom of the cabinet I added little plastic domes, that's to elevate the cabinet and uh, just, just so the legs aren't touching the deck and you're not having that sort of contact of moisture that could then get up into the legs. So um, anyway, uh, I guess if I learned anything on this this project it is to not paint over purple heart people really don't like that and if you're going to paint over purple heart uh, prime the board first so nobody knows you're painting over purple heart my feeling with that was uh, I've had that board kicking around the barn for at least a decade and I was happy to just use it up and, and stop moving it around I um, I don't think I'm the biggest fan of purple heart I'm not I just don't like that purple color I bought those boards and uh, are that I did make something and that was a leftover board and and then it just sort of has been kicking around ever since and um, is there anything else I guess that I guess that's it so I'm gonna leave the cabinet out here it's gonna be out here all winter long I'm not going to take it in now even though it, the finish is a little you know I just finished this so I would have liked if I had a day or two before the, um... oh, I hate road noise. Anyway, I would have liked it if I had a day or two for the finish to cure, but I think it'll be okay. So, I think that's a sign of getting old. When you hear cars and motorcycles like that make you mad, what, you know, what can you do? Anyway, all right, I'll see you on Friday. I hope I answered your questions and, um, uh, you know, actually, I'm going to talk a little bit about long videos now. Uh, the reason why my videos are sometimes long is when I'm making a cabinet like this, it takes a little while to make a cabinet. And my feeling is uh, I'm making these videos for, I think of my brother, Will. He's, a wood, he's, he's not a professional woodworker, but he likes to work with wood. And the idea is that with the video, with the cut list and the drawing, that somebody who doesn't build furniture every day can make one of these projects. And one of my favorite parts of making these videos is 
when people send me pictures of things that they've made based on uh, the things that I've made here in the barn. So um, anyway, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you on Friday. One more thing. Uh, I had gotten a question from David Dode. He had seen my photography set up here when I was working on the model for that cabinet and asked about the paper. There's nothing special about this paper. You could use any gray paper. You could even paint paper gray. This happens to be paper that was part of packing material when I ordered some watercolor paper. The watercolor, the high quality paper, was sandwiched in between this gray paper. Really, as far as making a backdrop, you only, all you need is a large enough piece of paper to be able to make this curve, and that's what gives you a seamless backdrop.